slaughter's my name. Luke Slaughter. Cattle's my business. It's a tough business. It's big business. I've got a big stake in it. And there's no man west of the Rio Grande big enough to take it from me. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, Civil War cavalryman turned Arizona cattleman. Across the territory, from Yuma to Fort Defiance, from Flagstaff to the Huachucas, and below the border through Chihuahua and Sonora, his name was respected or feared, depending on which side of the law you were on. Man of vision, man of legend, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. <laughs> I came from Texas to the Arizona Territory with 2,000 head of scrawny longhorns. But the good grass in the valley of the San Pedro fattened them up like butter. And when I got a contract to deliver 1,000 head to the Indian Agency at San Carlos, I signed with a clear conscience. When you sell beef to the government, they want good beef. They always seem to want it yesterday. Hey, Wichita. Where are the steers from the southeast section? One and Jose went for him. Uh, you, Frankie, don't run them critters. They gotta be delivered with legs on. Well, they won't lose much weight on the trail to San Carlos. Nope. A lot of grass on the route you picked. Have to hustle them to make it in six days, old Luke. Yeah, we sure can't let them do any sightseeing. Closer at the next batch, Frankie. Well, I wish we had a few more hands. 1,500 Longhorns is a big passel for six men and a cook. A 1,000 head, Wichita. That's what the contract calls for. If we deliver two out of every three we start out with, we're doing mighty nifty. Now, what are you talking about? If I lost one out of ten on a simple six-day trail in perfect spring weather, I wouldn't dare call myself a cattleman. Luke, you've been operating in Texas, where there ain't no mountains, no rivers, no engines, no rustlers, and no legal acting robbers who charge you in cattle if you set foot on their graze land. There ain't no problems in Texas. Matter of fact, there ain't nothing in Texas. <laughs> I knew I had some reason for coming to Arizona. But I'm still not losing one for three oh. or... Buenos dias, senor Slaughter, senor Witch. The name's Wichita. And where's them critters you and Jose was supposed to cut and bring in? They come with Jose. Oh, why didn't you help him, Juan? We're in a hurry. It don't take Jose long. Only 50 little cattle. I told you to cut a hundred, you loafing scalawag. There were not a hundred left. I think maybe Ramirez visited the southeast section last night. Luke, I've been telling you it was Ramirez picking away at our herd. This time he's really hit us. And if you're asking me, you'd better get out of Parsi and go after him. Well, there isn't time, Wichita. If we don't hit the trail today, we can't live up to the contract. Yeah, and now we ain't got more than about 1,300 head fit for the trail. And if you aim to deliver a 1,000, you better take them all. All right, Wichita. You know Arizona better than I do. But I'll bet we come back with at least 300 steers with my brand on them. I bet you six months' pay we don't. Easy, streak. Easy. We're going to start them soon. Six months' pay. That's what I'll bet you. All right, I'll give you a real bet. Six months of your wages against Blue Streak here. Yeah. Now, Luke, if you got to lose the best horse in your string to learn yourself a lesson, I'm willing to teach you. Yeah. So far, so good, Luke. Right, Wichita. We'll make a good 20 miles again today. The herd looks so much smaller than it did when we started yesterday. Anything happen while you was riding night watch? Nothing much, except now I know Ramirez is in the neighborhood. Well, why didn't you wake the boys and go after them? Well, they need their sleep. It's better deliver these cactus boomers on schedule. But you can't let that thieving Mexican keep cutting in on your herd like this. Right now I have to, Wichita. Well, if you was to ask me... I didn't. Now let's keep these critters moving. Yeah, get along there. Got 
the coffee boil in there, Cookie? Yeah, sure have, Mr. Slaughter. Fix your breakfast in two jerks if you're ready. Nah, I'll wait until the sun and the men get up. But you've been riding watch since midnight for three nights. Yeah, I'm a little tired at that. You know, this is a good night horse, but he's no blue streak. With streak, I can catch a few winks in the saddle and leave the watching up to him. Oh, you shouldn't have betting him against Wichita's pay. We ain't going to get back home with no 300 head. Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, this pony's learning. We got visitors out there. Well, wait while I grab me a Mustang and a gun, Mr. Slaughter. I'll let you know if I need any help. Let's go, boy. You looking for something, gentlemen? Whose outfit's this? Belongs to Luke Slaughter from down below Tombstone. You boys ever hear him? Not me. No. Nope. Me neither. You his trail boss? That's right. We watched you bed the outfit down from the mesa. I'd say you got something over a thousand head. Yeah, that's right. We were delivering a thousand to San Carlos. Government business don't pay. They're too fussy. But good luck to you anyhow. Thanks. Oh, by the way, you're crossing private graze. This is part of Wendell Miller's spread. Our maps don't say so. Map makers can't keep up with things these days. I don't blame you for taking this short trail to San Carlos. Only you understand it'll cost you a hundred head. Well, if this is Miller's land and that's his crossing fee, have your boys cut him out. I haven't got the time or the men to argue. Slash those logs tight, boys. If they come loose in midstream, we lose our chuck wagon. It looks like she'll float all right, Mr. Slaughter. Yeah, it's a good trick to get the wagon across, Luke, but... Uh... Texas trick. We did have one little river back there. But if we drive downstream 11, 12 miles, the critters can ford. Yeah, and we'd lose a day. Well, the current's running too strong here. Them lazy longhorns will let themselves wash down river, and we'll lose two days rounding them up again. Blue streak will make them swim. Juan, Frankie... You both got your top horses? Si, senor Slaughter. Good. Follow Streak and me and try to do what we do. The rest of you, head the steers into the river. Keep them coming steady. We're going to lose half of what's left. Come on, Blue Streak. Huh? Cookie, once that stubborn Luke gets something into his head. Hey, 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 look at that gray horse swim at them steers. Why, he's a... He's a hazing them like he was on dry land. And he's learning the other horses how to do it. Wichita, they got them brainless longhorns swimming across in a straight line. Maybe they do know a thing or two in Texas. I still don't see how you done it, Luke. We didn't lose more than ten head in the river. Uh, Blue Streak knows more about cattle than most waddies. Real thoughtful of you to rest them tonight. You can turn them over to me nice and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how you really think you're going to win that bet? Well, I know it. If we got 1,100 head at this point, I'll eat them. No, don't eat them. They're sold. And we'll make San Carlos by mid-afternoon tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll have me a big girl of horse. Oh, maybe. What you stopping for? The show. What show? Those stars. Millions of them. Pretty, aren't they? Yeah. And mighty helpful when you're lost at night. No, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about... Well, about nature. Yeah. Hmm. For instance... That old owl and that coyote might even be talking to each other. Yeah. And they might be talking Apache language. You think so? Sure do. And we're going to lose another parcel of cattle if we don't ride out there and stop them. And get scalped in the middle of the night. We'll collect from them on the way back, in daylight. Well, my count was a thousand head plus nineteen. Agree with yours, Mr. Slaughter? Well, I had it plus fifteen. 
Yeah, should I add the extras to the amount of the treasury draft, or uh, you driving them back? I'll throw them in free. Save the government a little money. Give your Indians a little extra beef. His engines got a little extra beef. They snuck about 50 head right out from under our noses last night. Oh, I doubt if they were reservation Indians. There's a renegade band somewhere south in the Arrow Viper Hills. Yeah, but the cavalry from Fort Thomas will dig them out for long. I'll get the draft ready for you, Mr. Slaughter. That's fine, sir. Well, Luke, you've done a better job than I thought you would at that. I'll let you ride Blue Streak part way home. <laughs> I'll ride him all the way, Wichita. We may be starting home without a herd, but our bet pays off on how many we're driving when we get there. In a moment, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone returns. Never mind the bait... Simply join us on CBS Radio later on today when yours truly, Johnny Dollar, waits with bated breath for the return of a missing fisherman. It's another exciting insurance fraud case for Johnny to solve. And another thrilling mystery for you. Join us on most of these same stations today as the plot thickens for CBS Radio's Johnny Dollar. <laughs> And now, Act Two of William N. Robeson's production of Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. We'd made our drive to San Carlos in six days. The men expected to get home in three, but I had some unfinished business to take care of. Look down in the basin there, boys. About 50 longhorns and six Apache herdsmen. Uh-huh. Bound to be our critters. The four of us going to tackle the six of them? Well, if we did, we'd have at least 20 more braves pouring down from those wickiups on the far side. Give me your guns, Wichita. Thanks. Now, Juan and I are going to circle behind the camp to draw those Apaches away from the cattle. When we do... You and Frankie hightail it in and drive them east as fast as they'll go. Well, now we come a fur piece to pick up 50 measly longhorns, but east, we're, we're tombstone southwest of here. Sure. But like you say, we've come a fur piece. And when I get those steers back, I aim to keep them. <laughs> All four pistols loaded one. See? Si. Bueno. Just circle and keep firing. And when the Apaches come after us, well, we've got better horses. Let's go. Luke's made a bad mistake, Frankie. We run the cattle east till they're ready to drop. And where do we wind up? I don't know. It ain't pleasant country, though, I'll tell you that. Uh, it's Indian country, that's what it is. Why, it could be an Apache behind every boulder. And Luke's got our six guns. And then hey, we... Hey, there's one now. What? What? Mr. Bagby? Well, I... well you ain't uh, an Apache. <laughs> no. Captain Marcotte, attached to the cavalry at Fort Thomas. Mr. Slaughter suggested that you might enjoy the company of some of my men as far as the fort. Enjoy it? <laughs> Your chuck wagon and remuda are there already. And Mr. Slaughter says he'll join you as soon as he herds those renegade Indians back to the reservation. The next order of business was the cattle baron, Wendell Miller, whose men had charged me a crossing fee of a hundred head. He wasn't the kind you call out the United States Cavalry for. I went to his spread alone, under the name of Link Slater. I told him I wanted to get started in the cattle business. And I flattered him until he was treating me like a long-lost nephew. Now there's a herd I have in mind for you, Link. An even hundred head, prime longhorns. Well, I don't know that I'm much of a judge yet, but uh, well, they look fine to me. My foreman picked them up. The drover was going through last week, a little short of cash, I guess, and 
bought and got them for $10 a head. You get them for what I paid for them. You've got a bill of sale, I suppose. <laughs> That's right, young fella. <laughs> In the cattle business, we don't take anybody's word. <laughs> oh, well, no, I didn't oh, mean that. Oh, it's all right. That's all right. You're a promising young man. And I'd like to see you make a real go out of that little place you told me about. Try to build it up to a, to a spread like this one. Well, I don't know that I can ever do that. You can if you're willing to take some advice. I'd be grateful for it. All right, Link. This is a tough new country. Man's got to make his own laws. He's got to keep his eyes and ears open and take what he wants. Prove you can do that, you'll be all right. That's just what I'm going to prove. Now, uh, how about that bill of sale? Oh, yes, of course, my boy. <laughs> the receipt for 100 head at $10 a head, signed by a fella named uh, Luke Slaughter, or something like that. I see. The steers all seem to have a lazy S brand. Mr. Miller, can I tell you something about keeping your eyes and ears open? <laughs> now, don't tell me that one of these critters here is missing a horn or that he bellows off key. <laughs> Look at the brand on my horse. And listen while I say Luke Slaughter and Link Slater. What? You heard me. And now suppose you show me a map of your spread. And I'll show you that these steers were taken off a trail five miles west of your farthest boundary. Now look here, Slater. It's Slaughter. And I don't like having the name forged. My foreman brought in the cattle and the receipt. I'm not going to court to argue about it. Like you advised me, I'm making my own laws. And I'm taking those steers for exactly what you paid for them. Nothing. Finally, there was the business that started long before the drive. The business of Ramirez. Well, Luke, last camp before we hit the home range again. Maybe. How do you mean maybe, Senor Slaughter? We drive it easy tomorrow with so few cattle. <laughs> My golly, Luke, if you could have picked up 150 more of our own brand summers, you would have won our bet. Yeah, bet or no bet. Everybody's worked hard, and tomorrow we ought to have some fun. Who wants to go hunting? Oh, for that. Luke, you just want to put off handing Blue Streak over to me. I ain't a-going. Uh, me and Jose, we were the best hunters in all Sonora. Bears, deers, pumas, eagles, uh, apaches. We hunt anything, Jose and me. Good. Then you're just the men I need for tomorrow. Gracias. What we hunt for? Ramirez. Ramirez? Sure. We know he's operating around here. Uh, I think maybe not. Ramirez has moved. Yeah, I bet he ain't moved far. That's right. With a couple of great hunters like Juan and Jose, we shouldn't have any trouble finding him. But uh, Ramirez has many men. We don't have so many. I've heard that Ramirez will accept a man-for-man -man challenge. All we have to do is get word to him somehow that you and Jose and I want to meet him and his two best men. Senor Slaughter, I would like to do this, but I just remember my mother. She was very sick when I leave. I, I, I better go see her now, pronto. Well, I'm sorry to hear that one. It'll have to be Jose and me against Ramirez. Well, what about me? You said you wouldn't go hunting. Se Senor Slaughter, Jose's little brother, his wife is going to have a baby, so he better go to Hermosillo, too. You give us our pay? Well, of course, boys. Here's yours, Jose. Thirty gold for you, Juan. Frankie. Here, yeah, boss. These boys want their ponies out of the remuda. Gracias, senor. Jose and me, we would stay if you needed us for the cattle. But I understand. Caramba. I hope you find your families in the best of health. Uh, si. Uh, muchas gracias. Oh, uh, Juan. If you happen to run across Ramirez, tell him I'll be right plumb in the middle of Rio Verde Meadow at noon tomorrow, all alone, on a big gray horse. I can't bear to watch it happen to you, Luke. Then go on back and wait with the herd and the chuck wagon. Maybe... Ramirez didn't get your message. 
Don't worry about that. He got it. Juan saw to that. Whoa! Whoa! Well, Wichita, you can either go back or wait here on the rim. I'm riding into that basin alone. Luke, ain't you... Ain't you never heard how Ramirez fights? Sure. He'll come charging down with that big shotgun blazing. And, and... tear you to bits before he's in your pistol range. You know, Wichita, the United States Army is always testing new weapons. The boys at Fort Thomas wanted me to try out this rifle. That skinny thing? Oh, how far will it shoot? Nobody's quite sure. So I'm going to aim and let Ramirez fire first. If this rifle's no good, well, I guess you'll have to take the herd in yourself. I'll ever be streak. Hope he doesn't keep us waiting too long. Hola! Right on the dot. He's way short. This rifle better not be. Tumbled him. Go, streak! First shot, she break my hand, senor. The next shot, she break my arm. The next shot, she miss. I guess I haven't got the hang of this rifle yet. Your pistol, she's still loaded, no? If I let you go, would you take your men across the border and stay there? <laughs> I guess so. She's pretty nice in Sonora. All right. But if I ever hear of you setting foot on United States soil again, I'm coming after you, and you'll never go back alive. A man does not seize a branding iron twice by the hot end, senor. And there's one more thing, Ramirez. A matter of several hundred cattle with the lazy-ass brand. I aim to have them back before you leave. Sixty-six, sixty-seven, three sixty-eight. That would you make it, Wichita? I quit counting at three hundred, Luke. <laughs> oh my! No more wages coming for six months, and I ain't got enough cash to even buy me a pint of tonsil varnish. Well, you wouldn't have, except that you lost that bet before your pay got doubled. What? what? Come on now. Let's get those cattle to grass. Yeah! Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, starring Sam Buffington, was written by Fran Van Hartisfeld and directed by William N. Robeson. Editorial supervision by Tom Hanley. Supporting Mr. Buffington were Junius Matthews, Don Diamond, Peter Leeds, Barney Phillips, and Norm Alden, with music composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Next week at this time, we return with... Slaughter's the name. Luke Slaughter. When we meet up again, you can call me that. Luke Slaughter. This is the CBS Radio Network.